Hello everyone, Stefan Ash here, and today I'm going to go over what healer is my main in 2021 and why. I'm also going to break down the level thresholds for each healer as you level up. I recently just hit level 80 with all of my healers and have a pretty good idea of the differences between each. This is my own personal opinion and yours might differ from what I think. And in the words of the famous Tabitha Brown, that's your business. I just want to give you the general differences of each so then you can make your best judgment when choosing your favorite playstyle. This is not a rotations guide or even a damage guide, this is just to highlight the differences differences and similarities between the healing skills of each healing class so you can figure out your own playstyle. Rotations, biz, or also known best in slot, are left to their own specialized videos and there are plenty out there. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. White Mage. Unlocked at level 1, raw healing power and regen. White Mage specializes more in regen magic. This means healing spells will have an initial cure potency and then a cure over time. Makes it pretty easy to keep people alive and the raw potency it offers makes it a pretty beginner friendly class. Job specific healing skills are lilies which you receive every 30 seconds when you are in battle. At later levels you will unlock a blood lily which is like pretty much a damage nuke for the White Mage. Scholar. Unlocked at level 30, Fairy Healing, and Shields. Scholar unlocks when you reach level 30 with your Arcanist class from Limza Lominza. Scholar provides a base potency heal as well as a shield equaling the amount healed. Great beginner class as a fairy will take care of most of the healing in the lower level content. It will make you pay attention to the fights to know when to execute your AoE heals to apply the shields. The job specific healing skills are the fairy and you unlock more abilities that your fairy can use, later having her transform into a seraph to apply shields and healing everyone with ease. Astrologian unlocks at the beginning of Heaven's Ward but starts at level 30, damage buffs, and regen shield. Astrologian is not as beginner friendly as the other healing classes, fast paced healing with a lot of cooldowns to manage. In the beginning, you have access to Diurnal Sect, which puts regen on your abilities. Later, you unlock Nocturnal Sect, which is your shield. So basically, both White Mage and Scholar abilities mash together. Job specific skills are actually damage damage buff skills for the party. It focuses on drawing cards to place damage buffs on your party every 30 seconds on top of managing healing. If you like fast paced healing and a lot of things to manage during gameplay, Astrologian is for you. Level Threshold Breakdowns In this section, I'll be going over the main level threshold breakdowns for each class and what you're going to be focusing on for from a healing standpoint. Again, this is just to highlight the similarities and the differences between the classes so then you can start to figure out the kind of healing style that you're going to want to choose. Level 30 and below. This is when you're starting out as well as doing your leveling roulette. They all basically have the same toolkit which is as follows. White Mage, Cure 1, Cure 2, Medica 1, Scholar, Physic, Adloquium, and Succor. Astrologian, Benefic 1, Benefic 2, Helios. Basically, you have Cure Level 1, Healing Skill, your Leveling 2 Healing Skill, and your AoE Healing Skill. Keep the tank alive while chipping away at your enemies. Not much to focus on here other than that. Level 50 Content. This is pretty much where you'll be spending most of your time with a lot of the content sinking down to this level when you're doing roulettes. White Mage. So here, White Mage still does not have access to the Lilies Unlocked, but you do get Medica 2. This is pretty much your party-wide regen and extremely useful in pre-pool boss fights. I pretty much keep this up during the whole dungeon and it takes care of most of the healing. You also have Benediction, which is your oh crap heal for the tank. This paired with the skill regen, and this is basically your level 50 toolkit for the White Mage. Scholars. 
Scholars will have a few more fairy abilities at this point. It is similar concept with White Mage with a pre-pull ad loquium on the tank to stop him from taking damage by applying a shield. The difference here is you want to maximize your healing skills since they apply shields and try to utilize both the healing and the shield. You have ether flow stacks that become your OGCDs or off global cooldown healing and will be utilizing a skill called Lustrate quite a lot for decent heals on the tank. Make sure to always keep ether flow on cooldown. That mixed with your shields and basic fairy healing and fairy regen skill whispering dawn is the basis for this level of content. Astrologian. You now have access to both the regen and the shield skills. Usually for dungeons, I would run regen or diurnal as it's a little more forgiving. And for trials, you do the opposite of the other healer as regen effects and shield effects do not stack. Example, if you are with a white mage, you would do nocturnal sect, also known as the shield. If you were with a scholar, you would do diurnal sect, also known as the regen. So you get the best of both worlds into healer content. If you are paired with another astrologian, just pick what you want to do and they can do the opposite or vice versa. You can always chat it out in the chat section. This is really where the job specific skills will come into play the most. Throwing out cards to buff melee or range DPS and then using a wide damage buff for everyone. Keeping draw on cooldown at all times is your main concern with this job as it not only regenerates MP but also makes content go considerably faster when you can utilize the damage buffs effectively and keep them on cooldown. End level content 75 to 85. So here's where it gets a little more player specific and is more for the general player than those who are raiding and doing savage content. By this time, you have played with the job enough to know the general basis of what you should be focusing on. I recommend looking up rotations and gear slots best suited for your playstyle. The Balance Discord is a good source of information for all things job related and breaks down many of the main questions each of the jobs have as you get to the end game content. Let's jump into the last leg of the content for each healer class. White Mage. Similar to level 50 with regens, and now you have all your skills for the lilies. You'll want to be utilizing your lilies so then you can use blood lily, which is a massive damage skill that can only be used after filling the blood lily gauge. That mixed with temperance and a singular shield ability called divine benison placed on the tank every 30 seconds really is the makeup of the white mage. Again, I believe it is so forgiving due to the region aspect of this job and is recommended for all beginner players who have not played any healer yet. Scholar. At the end of the game, you are definitely utilizing your fairy more and have a better well-rounded skill set. Focusing on learning your fights and applying shields and healing in an effective manner takes some keen insight on the fights. I really love this job because you're having to really pay attention to each of the fights and maximizing healing, shields, and damage. I felt like it isn't as raw power potency for healing like White Mage and requires some pre-planning and knowledge of the battle. It is not as forgiving as White Mage, so I do recommend this to people who have prior experience for healing. Astrologian. If you could not tell, this is by far my favorite healing class of the three. I started with White Mage and love the sheer ease of the class, but Astrologians offer so much utility healing and just fast paced gaming, which I like. It keeps you at attention as well as has you mapping out your moves ahead of time due to the delayed skills such as Earthly Star and Horoscope. Between drawing and using the cards based on range or melee DPS or using the skill divination that gives 4-6% to damage buff based on the card, to have so much utility, cooldowns to manage as well as offer damage buffs to the entire party really puts this job above the rest for me personally. I would recommend playing with other healers first to get used to the healing job setup for Dungeons and Trials. If you are a veteran player and have been playing for a while, then I think you'll be able to pick up this job right away. Well, there you have it, my personal take on the healing subclasses for Final Fantasy XIV. Thank you guys for watching my video. Comment down below and tell me what your favorite healing class is and why. If you like this video and want to see a DPS version or a tank version, boop that like button below and subscribe. I'll see you all in my next video.